everybody. My name's Emma. I'm Julia. And we're here at YMCA Camp Kichikuana. We are here on Beausoleil Island, which is part of Georgian Bay Islands National Park. Uh, and just while we start this video, we want to let you know that Beausoleil Island uh, has been a place of rest and a place of meeting for indigenous people for thousands and thousands of years. So we're very fortunate to be able to work and, and live on an island with such a rich indigenous history. Mm -hmm. We are here today uh, at Y Camp to talk to you about teaching and mentorship. And we're really excited for this uh, topic today. We think it's really important and really applicable uh, to being at camp. So we're really excited, but before we get started, we just wanna tell you a riddle. Mm, that's true, we do wanna tell you a riddle. Okay, today's riddle is, since we are on an island, it's, it's kind of part of the whole landscape. So, three sailors were sailing around their boat on Georgian Bay. Windy Georgian Bay with lots of windswept pine trees along the horizon. So these three sailors are in their sailboat. They're sailing along, they're sailing along. They ha experience a huge gust of wind and their boat capsizes, which means oh, it flips no. over. All three sailors fall out of their boat. Two of the sailors get their heads completely soaked and their hair is wet, everything is sopping wet, all of those sorts of things. The third sailor, not a hair on his head was wet. How is that so? Take a moment to see if you can solve this riddle. Um, pause it if you need to. We'll just wait a few seconds. So two of them sopping wet. The third one, not a hair on his head was wet. How is that so? The third sailor was bald. Oh, so he no didn't have on any hairs on his head oh. to get wet. So that is the answer to this riddle. What a good one. Um, the first thing we're gonna do in this video is take you through uh, a whole bunch of different types of learning styles so that we have some context when we start talking about teaching styles. We're gonna show you a few examples of how to match your teaching style to what it is you're teaching or instructing or facilitating. And then we're gonna round out the video and talk about mentorship and everyday leadership. Uh, we're really excited for today's video and we will see you soon. So now what we're going to talk about is different ways to present information and different ways people take in information. So there are four main ways that we can take in information. And some call those four learning styles. Uh, lots of people have one they may prefer, but really everyone needs a bit of a combination in order to properly learn any subject. And different styles might work better for different uh, things that you're trying to teach. And there's a wide range of what those are and we might get a little bit more into that when Julia talks to us about learning styles or about teaching styles, sorry. So the first one that we're going to talk about is visual. So lots of people, people who consider themselves visual learners like to take information in maybe through a PowerPoint, through graphs and charts and maps and anything that they can look at and help them to visualize the information that they're receiving. The next type is auditory. And so people who process things uh, in an auditory manner like to talk about them. They like to listen to people discuss the information, to engage in conversation, to ask questions, and they like to use verbal uh, means of communication to process the information. The third type of learning style is kinesthetic, and that means you learn by doing. So you might want to actually try something out. You might want to, you might not like looking at an instruction manual for how to build some furniture, but instead you want to just get your hands in there, see what works, what doesn't, uh, and maybe follow along that way. And then the fourth type is reading and writing. So you might like to read about the information, write summaries in your notes when you're studying, uh, take notes when you're listening to a lecture, and you might need to put it onto paper in order to fully process what you're taking in. So like I said, a lot of times people prefer a combination, and all of those types of information processing can be found in many, many different teaching styles, but they're good to think about uh, when you're trying to present information to a group, and you wanna try to hit all four of those uh, when you are teaching a large group of people so that everyone can have something that they can cling on to to really understand the material you're covering. Next, we're gonna talk about teaching styles. So teaching styles, you can either uh, kind of teach a certain way depending on your audience and how you think they might best be taking in information, but more likely you'll adjust your teaching style to the activity or the content that you're trying to teach 
because some things are better translated in uh, one teaching style and other things are better translated in a different teaching style. So I'm gonna list the teaching styles, briefly describe them, but then we're gonna show you an example using a couple of different teaching styles so you'll understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about. So the five types of teaching styles, uh, the first one is authoritative. So this would be a lecture. So someone speaking about the information. The second type of teaching style is a demonstrator slash coach style. So uh, someone who teaches by showing. The third is a facilitator style of teaching. So uh, guiding your group through the steps to acquire the information. The fourth style is a delegator style. So this is where the group is more responsible for their own learning and a lot of the learning happens by the group sort of figuring things out on their own. Uh, of course, guided by a teacher, but most of the learning is happening from within. And then lastly, the blended model, which essentially means using bits of pieces from all of the methods that I just described. Awesome. So we are going to demonstrate uh, a couple of these teaching styles and demonstrate the way that certain activities translate better using certain uh, different teaching styles. So in this exercise, I'm going to teach Emma how to tie a knot mm. using a couple of different teaching styles. So uh, try and see if you can figure out which teaching style uh, I'm using along the way. And I'm going to use three different ones. So here's the first one. Okay, Emma. Yes. Uh, I would love for you to tie this knot. Okay. Not so, not so good? No. Okay, so uh, that was the delegator style. So that's what the one that I was talking about where a lot of the learning happens from within the group, trying different things, figuring them out, uh, and maybe being more guided by the teacher rather than instructed. That style probably doesn't work so well for no. learning how to tie a knot. Let's try something else. To tie this knot, an alpine butterfly knot, mm -hmm. you are going to make a loop uh, with the rope and once you've got that loop twist it one more time and make it look like an eight okay then what you're gonna do eight. is you're gonna fold the top of the eight underneath the bottom of it and through the lower half of the eight it's oh, a lot of words <laughs> Okay, and then pull the two working ends of the knot so if you can see if it worked. Oh, I don't think so. It felt close. So that, does anyone know what style of uh, teaching I might have been using? I'll give you a second. That was the authoritative style. So that was me uh, just explaining the instructions. I wasn't even, if you notice, really looking to see if Emma was getting it or not and adjusting my instructions based on whether or not she was. I just sort of put the instructions out there and said, that's that. Probably doesn't work super well for knot tying either. Uh, it would work well for, for, for some things, but certainly not for tying a knot. The third way that I'm going to teach Emma how to tie a knot is using the demonstrator slash coach uh, teaching style. So uh, I'm actually, oh, I wasn't supposed to say which type I was doing. Oh okay, yeah, one sec, sorry, restart. Okay, this is the third teaching style that I'm going to use to teach Emma how to tie a knot. So see if you can figure out which teaching style I'm using. Uh, I'm gonna start by actually untying my knot, so that might give you a bit of a hint. Okay, so Emma, uh, we're gonna be teaching an, uh, tying an alpine butterfly knot. So okay. what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your rope and make a loop just anywhere. Okay. Uh, and then once you've got that twisted again, yeah. So it looks like an eight. So you can okay. see there's the two kind of holes Five, there. Eight, look two? like an eight. How's that look? Good, I think. Okay, perfect. Uh, you're gonna fold the top of your eight mm -hmm. um, down like past the bottom of your eight. Okay. And loop it back through the lower circle of the eight. Okay. Okay, so pull that a little bit tight and then pull the two working ends of the rope. And does it tighten? Yes. Uh, not quite, let's try that again. So, okay, so I make the loop. Make the loop. Like you said. And make another loop. One more twist. Oh, your mind's going straight. Okay, there we go. 
you're going to ta uh, fold the top of the eight down below the bottom half and back just through that lower circle of the eight. Pull it through. There we go. That, you, you got it? Got it. Perfect. Here's my alpine butterfly. Okay, so that teaching style, as you might have guessed, was the demonst demonstrator slash coach teaching style. So uh, in that example, I showed Emma how to do it and we sort of, I walked her through it and gave her ongoing feedback as we went. Since we were sort of doing it together, I could see, oh, the first time around she didn't quite get it, so let's try it again. Uh, and we were able to, Emma was able to do it by sort of watching me do it and I could see her doing it at the same time as I was explaining it. So that was that third uh, demonstrator slash coach style of teaching, which seemed mm -hmm. to work best for this type of activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found it really helpful. Uh, it's hard to use really specific language about ropes. Uh, twisting and loops and all those sorts of things can mean a lot of things. So that was perfect uh, for me to learn that knot. Uh, we do want to let you know and, and encourage you that though the demonstrating method might be best for this, uh, which I believe it is, uh, it's not best for everything. All of these teaching styles have their place and are applicable in lots of situations. So, for example, even though the authoritative style didn't work best for this, just telling me how to tie the knot wasn't successful, there are points in time when that will be the method that you'll want to use. So, one main example that I can think of is if it's for safety. So, here at on Beausoleil Island, we have a lot of rattlesnakes, which is really cool, uh, but a little bit risky. And so we have to teach people how to be safe around the rattlesnakes. And we can't let them figure it out. We can't give them ongoing feedback. We can't give the group the responsibility of figuring out how to stay safe from rattlesnakes. We tell them instead on the first day, if you see a rattlesnake, take a few steps backwards and tell a staff member. And those are some really simple steps that they can learn to stay safe from those rattlesnakes. Once we do have a rattlesnake, sometimes we'll show people what it looks like, how to identify it, all sorts of things like that. And we can actually show them how to stay safe from the rattlesnake. But we don't always have a rattlesnake right in front of us, which is a good thing. And so sometimes we have to use the authoritative style to let them know the best way forward. Thank you for learning about the learning and teaching styles today. So now that we've learned about teaching styles, and uh, learning styles, we're gonna talk a little bit about being a mentor, which is sort of the bigger picture of all of this. Not so much when you're directly instructing, uh, but just when you're living your life at camp. So at camp, when we grow up, oftentimes we have mentors and we choose those mentors. They can be counselors, other camp staff, other leaders that you see, um, counselors in training, all of these sorts of people. The point is, we choose a mentor or mentors to look up to, and they end up usually influencing quite a bit about our leadership styles and the way we choose to be as people. An interesting thing happens as you grow up at camp and as you become more of a leader at camp is that while you'll still have mentors, you end up being a mentor to younger campers and younger kids as well. So it's a really interesting shift when you start to realize that you are then a mentor for younger campers or kids uh, because you remember looking up to people when you were that age. And so what becomes really important as you become a mentor and as you start to realize, oh, I might be a mentor for these younger campers or younger kids, is that your leadership uh, and your role modeling needs to become more consistent and, and you start to really kind of uh, round yourself out as a leader. And Emma's gonna talk a little bit about that everyday leadership concept. So there's a TED talk uh, by a man named Drew Dudley and it's called Everyday Leadership. And if you go watch that TED talk, I think it will ring really true to what you see at camp. So like Julia was saying about mentorship and how uh, we transition into being a mentor at camp, there's, there's thousands of little eyes all over the place that are watching our every move. And this video does a great job of explaining all of those little things uh, that can have an impact on someone when people are watching you so closely and looking up to you uh, in the way they do to mentors. So in this video about everyday leadership, Drew Dudley talks about the importance of lollipop moments. And he explains uh, his lollipop moment and talks about how there was this time when someone had a really big impact on him and he told them years later and they didn't even remember. They had no idea that they had done something that had been that, impa that impactful to him. And so 
We want to encourage you to think about the times that has happened to you. There might be a time where someone said something to you or someone gave you a helping hand or you saw someone do something that you really looked up to uh, that's really, really stuck with you. And to them, it might have just been an everyday act. And that's that's sort of the concept of everyday leadership and of lollipop moments. And we can create those for campers and for other, for peers and staff members at camp all the time. A lot of the times we think about leadership as these grand gestures, uh, these, these huge, you know, a firefighter running out of a burning building carrying a baby. And while that is certainly leadership, it's really important that we recognize uh, that leadership is, is those huge moments and it's also smaller everyday things that you do that you don't even realize might have an impact on people. So uh, like Emma was saying, I encourage you after this video to reflect on lollipop moments and you'll know more about what that means when you watch the video, but reflect on some lollipop moments that you've experienced and think about how that has helped shape your leadership today and how everyday acts of leadership that you can do can help shape other people's leadership in the future. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching everybody. Thank you so much for joining us to learn about teaching and mentorship today. We hope that you learned something about teaching styles and learning styles and everyday leadership while you watched. We'll see you next week back at Y Camp. Bye.